Hey everybody, Happy New Year and welcome to Ready, Set, Drone. Today I'm going to take you through my 10 favorite drones for 2017. Uh, unlike other reviews that do this sort of thing, I've actually flown all of these. I have reviews on my channel for all of them, so you can check out more detail on them, but I'm just going to go through the list at a very high level and let you check it out, so stay tuned. So I'm going to preface this by saying that most of these drones came out in the latter half of 2016, so they're fairly new, um, and that I have actually flown all of these and have first-hand experience, so I'm speaking from the heart. I am also going to say that I've listed these in order from least expensive to most expensive. Now, you know, to say what's the best drone, that's a tough question because it depends on what you want to do with it. Are you shooting video? Uh, are you doing uh, FPV racing? Are you just wanting to fly around and have some fun indoors, outdoors? There's a lot of variables. Um, I am excluding FPV racers from this list because I'm going to do a separate video for that and I feel like that's a totally different category. Um, and these are also all under $1,000. Every single one of these drones on this list is under 1000 so if there's a drone over 1000 uh, it's not going to be on this list because this is my under 1000 list. Um, and I went in order from least expensive to most expensive. It doesn't mean that one is better than the other, it just means that it's more expensive than the other, although there is one that is absolutely my favorite and it is the most expensive. But other than that, the rest of them are kind of just depending on what you want to do. So let's start with number one, um, the first one on the list. It is the Veerhuk Voler 360. It's a tiny little quad. It comes in a tiny little case that you can throw into your backpack or into your pocket even. And it's great because if you want to fly it around indoors or fly it around with friends, uh, you can take it anywhere with you. Um, it's very inexpensive at 20 bucks. You can get it on Amazon and it really does a nice job of kind of teaching you how to fly. It's actually not one of the easier ones to fly because it is so small and it doesn't have prop guards. It's a bit challenging. Um, my pros for this one, for the Veerhuk Voler 360, are that it's very small and very portable. Um, it has a great little carrying case that you can fly around uh, or you can carry around. It protects it and it's also the controller. Um, and it's fun for indoor flight and for learning how to fly uh, and get better. Uh, my cons for it are it has a pretty short battery life, no prop guards as I said, which is okay if you're a decent pilot. Um, and it's also harder to fly than some of the bigger quads. So I wouldn't recommend it as your first quad, but if it's something that you're getting into and you want to get better, this is a great one to try. My second quad coming in at 50 bucks is the SEMA X5 UC. I've been a fan of SEMA quads for a while. They are really great for training. They're really great for learning. They, you can fly them indoors or outdoors. Uh, they're pretty rugged. Um, they're very inexpensive. And I really like the way that SEMA builds their quads. Now the SEMA X5 UC is uh, the next generation from the SEMA X5C. Um, it is about, as I said, 50 bucks. Uh, it's pretty easy to fly. It has a decent app, actually, so if you want to be able to do some recording of video and stuff like that, you can use the app and it works pretty well. Uh, it can fly indoors and outdoors. It has uh, air pressure altitude hold, which uses a barometer to actually keep it at a certain height. It can do flips. It has headless mode and it comes with two batteries. So for 50 bucks, I feel like this is probably one of the best values on the list if you're getting into flying quads. Now, a couple of downsides to it. Uh, number one, the video quality is not great. Even though it records directly to its uh, uh, micro SD card, don't expect to be have anything that's really all that usable. I wouldn't count it as a true uh, cinematic drone. Um, and then it also, I believe it has no live video feed. There is a more expensive SEMA that has a live video feed, but the SEMA X5 UC does not. But really, that's one of those things that's kind of gimmicky because there's a lag with regard to uh, Wi-Fi live video feeds, and it's not that easy to fly using it anyway. So I find that even when I have it available over Wi-Fi, I don't use it that often. So for me, again, the SEMA X5 UC at 50 bucks is a really great choice. Coming in at around 75 bucks is the MJX X601H. Now, the reason it's called the X601H is it's a hexacopter, and I think the six has to do with the fact that it has six uh, blades. It's a lot of fun to fly. It does come from MJX, and MJX actually does make a lot of quads, so that's, uh, you know, they've got a good reputation and they make decent stuff. Um, it's quiet, it's quick, it is air pressure, um, 
sensitive, meaning that it can hold its altitude based on the air pressure using a small barometer on the flight controller. It does have a headless mode, and it does do pretty good flips. Um, it's, it's a little different flying a hexacopter, I will say. It's the only hexacopter I've got in the list, and if you want to try it, I'd recommend this one. It's 75 bucks, and it flies pretty well. Um, the only thing I can say as a downside is it is a little too big to fly indoors, so it's one of those ones you want to fly outdoors, but it's, it's got enough uh, strength even though it has brushed motors, it can fly outdoors in a decent wind. So uh, worth checking out if you want to get into flying hexacopters. The next one coming in at 90 bucks is the MJX Bugs 3. Now I just got this recently. Uh, it is actually one of my favorite quads at the moment. It has brushless motors. It's pretty fast. Uh, it will carry an action camera. It's you know anything in the shape of a GoPro. So if you have either a GoPro or a knockoff, um, it will carry it. It doesn't have a gimbal, but it will carry it pretty well. And I'll tell you the thing that um, really impressed me the most was this thing will flip with a GoPro on it, which I didn't think it would do. Uh, if you watch my other review, you can see it happen. But I was pretty shocked at how well it flips holding the GoPro. Um, it also is a very cool looking design. It looks like a bug. That's kind of what they were going for. It looks a bit like a racer. Um, they call it a racer, actually, on the website. I wouldn't say it's a racer because it isn't really an FPV quad but it is something that you can fly pretty fast line of sight. Doesn't have any, uh, it doesn't have any transmitter on it, so you can't actually see a live view, but you can fly at line of sight. It does carry a GoPro, and if there's not a lot of wind, the footage actually looks pretty good. So if you're looking for something and you're not up to buying a gimbal yet, this might be a good one to start with. Um, my cons on it are, number one, it doesn't have a gimbal, which I kind of wish it did because if you want to shoot serious video, you need one. But again, if it's not windy, decent looking footage. And my second con is it has a 2S battery, which quite honestly is a little bit small for a quad of this size carrying a GoPro. It actually does pretty well. I'm surprised at how well it does with the 2S battery. But um, other than that, I think it's a great little quad for 90 bucks. The MJX Bugs 3. Number five on my list, coming in at $100, is the XK X251 Whirlwind. Now this quad I actually uh, reviewed quite a while back, uh, back in spring of 2016, so it's been out for a while. The reason this made my list is because it's actually a pretty bare bones quad. It's um, brushless, it has a carbon fiber frame, and the reason I like those things is because this is a pretty versatile, strong, uh, good trainer quad. You can crash it, it's going to hold up to some abuse, it definitely um, is fast, it's well built with this carbon fiber frame, and it uses a common battery, so it's one of those ones that you could actually buy extra batteries for very easily and fly it without having to buy a specialized battery, which is something that I always appreciate is when you can use a lot of different batteries or brands of batteries on the same quad. So this was the first uh, inexpensive brushless quad I ever received or flew, and I have to say I was impressed with it at the time. Um, there are lots more of them now, including the Bugs 3, which I just mentioned a moment ago, um, but this one's still a pretty strong contender. My, my gripes about it are it doesn't have a, a camera, although it could carry one. Um, it's a pretty bare bones quad with no app or anything like that, no transmission. Um, and again, that's kind of a gripe, but it's also kind of a plus because I feel like if you're just trying to learn how to fly line of sight, you don't need all that stuff. And finally, there's no headless mode or barometer hold. And again, uh, that could be a good or a bad thing. For me, that's actually a good thing because if you're flying without headless mode, you're actually learning how to fly. Um, but for people who are just starting out, headless mode is not a bad thing to have. So at 100 bucks, the X251 Whirlwind is a pretty good choice, worth checking out. Go watch the review and see what you think. Next on my list at $130 is the Potenzic F183WH. Now, the biggest uh, thing I like about the Potenzic are the LEDs. This thing has got bright LEDs all over it, and it really shows up against the day and the night sky. It's also black, so when you're flying it in uh, uh, against a, a white sky or a blue sky, it really shows up better than white quads do. Um, I appreciate that. I like that about it. Um, other than that, it's a pretty standard uh, quad in this price range at $130. It has um, headless mode. It has altitude hold. It does flips. Um, it has an FPV app. It does come with two batteries, which I appreciate. Um, I always like it when they come with a second battery because then you can fly while you're charging your other battery. Uh, it is. Uh, it does have brushed motors, which for this price of quad, that's questionable. Uh, they're decent brushed motors, so I haven't had any issues with mine. But I would say that brushless would be, would be better. 
Um, and the app is okay, but it's not great. So overall, I like the Potenzic. I really love the LEDs. I wish some other quads had this many bright LEDs on them, and I like the look of it. Um, and it is fun to fly. Nothing really special, but uh, if you're into a really cool looking quad that you can see day or night, the Potenzic is a great choice at 130 bucks. Up next is a quad that I was surprised I liked as much as I did. It's the U45 Blue Jay FPV quadcopter. Now, this thing is 150 bucks, and I'll be honest, when I first saw it, I looked at it and I said, this looks a lot like a SEMA. Why would I pay 150 bucks for something that looks like a SEMA? And I have to say that it's very similar to the SEMA, but the differences are subtle. It's a very cool looking quad. Um, you don't see very many blue ones, which I thought was kind of cool. The app is really pretty well written. The camera is decent. Um, it comes with two batteries. It can do flips. And it's quite a bit of fun to fly. Overall, I had low expectations, but I was more impressed than I expected. It does have a couple of drawbacks. Number one, it has some hokey things in the marketing materials. Uh, and in the app that I would just ignore. Uh, one of them is waypoints. This thing doesn't really uh, fly waypoints very well. Return to home. I wouldn't try that with it. It's not designed for that. If you need, if you want to fly something that does waypoints and return to home, get one with GPS. It's compatible with VR goggles, which again, uh, because of the lag from the Wi-Fi FPV, I wouldn't even try flying it that way. Uh, and then finally, it has uh, brushed motors. Um, it's kind of in that range again where I feel like it should probably have brushed brushless motors. If this thing had brushless motors, I would probably probably be my favorite quad. But uh, it has brushed motors. But for 150 bucks, the U45 Blue Jay is a pretty good deal. Definitely a good trainer. Solid quad. Um, I've had good support from the company. I've been in touch with them uh, and have been flying this thing for a while. And I really like it. It's one of my go-tos when I just want to go in the backyard and have some fun. Number eight on my list is the Walkera AIBAO. How do you say that? IBO? ABO? I'm not really sure how you say it. Um, virtual Wi-Fi FPV quadcopter. Now, this thing arrived, and I wasn't sure what to think about it. It looks like a mini Phantom. Um, it's very well built. It is uh, high quality. It's $450, so that's part of why um, I think you're getting better quality. Uh, it's really designed to be played with as a uh, augmented reality game. Now, I'll be honest. I've never played the augmented reality game. I need to give it a try. Um, and that may be something that really makes it one of my favorite quads, but it's on my list for a reason. And that's because it's a pretty well-built quad. The app is actually really well made. Um, I was impressed with the app. It reminded me a lot of the DJI Go app, which is kind of the gold standard. And it comes in multiple colors. You can buy it in pink, black, white. I think there may be one other color. Uh, it has brushless motors. And the camera quality is actually pretty decent. Uh, looking at the footage without a gimbal, I was impressed with how well it actually flew and uh, how smooth it looked um, despite not having a gimbal. And for 450 bucks, it kind of reminds me of flying like a, a Phantom 2 or a Phantom 1. Um, well, actually a Phantom 2 because you can get, uh, or a Phantom 3 standard maybe, but it's kind of in that range of the older Phantoms. Um, the downside, no gimbal, so your footage is not going to be super steady. And again, it is a little on the pricey side. If you're going to spend 450 bucks, you should really look at some other options. This one's not a bad option. So at 450 bucks, the Welkera iBo app virtual Wi-Fi quadcopter might be worth checking out. So coming up toward the end of the list, number nine, um, I had to go with something I know pretty well. There's a big gap of quads I've found, especially in the uh, toy and or camera drone uh, world not FPV necessarily, but for toys and camera drones, there's a big gap between $500 and $1,000. Kind of a desert there. Um, but there are two quads that are kind of falling into that category that I could highly recommend, and that's the Phantom 3 or the Phantom 4. Now, you're saying, wait a minute, the Phantom 3 and the Phantom 4 are both fairly old, especially the Phantom 3. Yes, but you can still buy them. You can still buy them from DJI. You can still buy them at Best Buy. You can still buy them on Craigslist and eBay. And I can't tell you enough, everybody asks me, hey, if I want to get into filming with a quad, what should I get? I don't have a lot of money. I always recommend the Phantom 3. Uh, the Phantom 3 is, it has a gimbal, takes great video, uses an app that's very solid and not buggy. I mean, it's, it's a real legit camera quad. And so if you want to get into filming and you don't have a big budget, I'd say buy a Phantom 3. I know there's different flavors. There's a standard and professional, etc. Um, you can weigh the pros and cons. I prefer the Phantom 3 Pro, 
um, especially because it uses Lightbridge, whereas the Phantom 3 standard uses uh, Wi-Fi, I believe. But regardless, if you can find a good Phantom 3 that's in good shape, either new or used, I highly rec recommend getting it if you want to get into filming. And now that the Phantom 4 Pro has come out, I expect the price on the Phantom 4 to drop pretty significantly. So if you can get a Phantom 4, all the better. If you're in that, say, $500 to $1,000 price range and you want to get something maybe with some extra batteries, maybe gently used, I highly recommend checking out and trying to find a Phantom 3 or a Phantom 4 to use as your quadcopter. All right, and finally, drum roll please, the uh, most expensive and, of course, top dog on this list for under $1,000 coming in at $999 is the DJI Mavic. The DJI Mavic is amazing. Um, I'm not going to sit here and gush about it because I've done that in too many other videos, but let me just tell you, it's tiny, it's super responsive, it's fun to fly, it's easy to fly, it takes great footage. Yeah, it has some issues and there's been some supply chain problems, but I think they are shipping now. And so, uh, if you really want an awesome quad, um, I'd recommend the Mavic very, very enthusiastically. Now, here's the thing. If it's your first quad, I actually wouldn't buy the Mavic right out of the gate. I'd buy... Uh, either the Potensic or the Blue Jay or uh, the SEMA or one of those others on the list first. Get to be a decent pilot with that. Learn how to fly without GPS. Learn how to fly in a little bit of wind. And then when you get the Mavic, the thing will be a piece of cake to fly. It is actually the easiest to fly on this whole uh, list because it has so many sensors and GPS and everything else built into it. Can't say enough good things about the Mavic. So if you got $9.99 to drop, uh, highly recommend getting yourself one. Hey, I'm going to put a list of all these drones in the description and uh, links back to where you can check them out, see the prices, uh, compare prices, etc. I really appreciate you watching. Looking forward to a great 2017, the year of the rooster in China. So, Happy New Year, China. And we'll see you next time on Ready, Set, Drone. Don't forget to subscribe and thanks for watching.